Hello everyone, welcome to The Daily Flip, episode three. Uh, we're gonna do a quick walk around of some stuff I've been doing today. Um, really, it's more of a lack of accomplishment today. I feel like I haven't, I've just been kind of spinning my wheels. Um, but uh, we picked up some stuff to take to Mako. Um, I was hoping to have another vehicle in the front line today. Unfortunately, I don't. Our Chevy Outlook, or not Chevy, it's a Saturn, basically a Chevy over there. It's supposed to be ready, didn't quite get around to finishing it. Another one, uh, this Ford Explorer over here was one I had hoped was going to be ready. It was not. And then also our Liberty here. This one here, actually, we have a, I think I have the key in my pocket still. We have a dehumidifier running currently. So if I can unlock the doors. All right. Well, maybe. Inside here, we have our carpet pulled up because we had a, a leak, and I, I think I showed yesterday, but I'll show you again. We have this humidifier. It's supposed to be sucking the moisture out uh, in the front. We also have the carpet pulled up in the seat there. Let me get my keys out of here. So up here is where we fixed our leak right here. Um, anyway, so we thought that was gonna be dry. Unfortunately, it wasn't dry yet today. So that one, maybe tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, this one here, Good thing I walked out because it looks like my lights are on still. But we were doing some carpet dyeing. I don't know how well we can see this. Um, down up in here, and you can't because it's dark, there was a lot of red stains, so we actually dyed this using, I don't think the dye is still in the car, but this is actually the cap. It was a uh, medium prairie tan color. This is an SEM product. So I guess I need to go see why my lights are on. Um, I'll do that in a minute actually. In the back we had another vehicle that was supposed to be ready. Actually in the very back of the lot, my mechanic is heading out for the day. We have a dead cat back here which is totally random, I have no idea. Some kid came in yesterday and said, hey, you have a dead cat. And uh, anyway, so in the back of our lot here we have a lovely dead cat that I need to deal with but I just have been putting that off. So our black thing there is an unfortunate, I'm zoom in. Is an unfortunate casualty of probably the traffic here. Uh, this being right outside of downtown Raleigh, like right through there is our, actually you can see, let me see, right up above here, you can see our, let me see, it's not a very impressive skyline, but it is a skyline. I grew up in very small towns growing up, so like we had one stoplight, so for me to be able to see lights in big buildings is, is pretty big, so. Um, otherwise, going back through the inside, Actually, answer a question here in a second. Actually, we're probably locked. Maybe I have my key in my pocket. A uh, question that we had come through yesterday, which is one that I've gotten a couple times, but I don't know if I've answered it. Drop my keys. I don't know if I've answered it um, on YouTube anyway. Um, is about when you're pricing out automotive repair jobs for other customers. Um, how do you do that? How do you know what to charge? Um, my locks here are a little funny. There we go. And get in. We actually had a Jeep roll into this building which was unfortunate. Um, one of my Saturday guys didn't put the emergency brake on, so it rolled down our little hill and made impact with our building here. So our door doesn't quite shut like it's supposed to, but anyway. Uh, so we're gonna walk inside, turn my lights back on in here. It's dark. Better lock this so I don't forget. But how do you know how to price? Maybe you know a little bit about cars. You get a reputation for dealing with cars. People see you work on your own stuff, so they think, like, well, can you fix mine? How do you know how to price it? Um, this here actually is a 2005 Chevy Colorado. This is a heater core. Um, this is the new one that's supposed to be replaced. These are the lines coming out of the vehicle here. The heater core is actually inside the dash up in here. So how do you know how to price that? So for me, what I do, which I have access to something you probably don't, it's called All Data. It's a software runs about 200 bucks a month. I'll come over here. This is our, I say R, this is my mechanics little computer station. Um, it's actually, we had a uh, MacBook that died, so we just stacked a new computer on top of it. I don't know why we haven't got rid of that. But uh, so basically, what he does, he'll come in here, he'll sit down, and he'll pull up like he has already, looks like, in all data right here. He would be coming in here, and I'll just type it in heater, it comes up here core there. For us, this is handy because we can see 
how long it's going to take to replace this. The computer on this calls for, let me see if you can see this, calls for, if it'll focus in, maybe not, there we go, and still that's horrible, it's not focusing. Um, if you could see that, it would say 5.9 hours is what it's supposed to take. So for us, that's what we are looking at time-wise. So then we then take the 5.9 and we multiply that out by our labor rate, which for us is $98. Um, we're giving these folks a better rate because I know them. Uh, actually, the guy that is driving this used to work here. Um, he did some detailing for us, so I'm trying to help him out. But uh, so this one would be, if it was normal labor for a customer, it would be six, 5.9, basically six times 98. You do the math, that's almost 600 bucks plus parts. I think this thing runs like 45 or something for this. You then have coolant being the antifreeze runs through here. You gotta get, uh, I think two gallons of antifreeze plus the Freon, cause you have to actually discharge that on this one. So you have Freon, add up all your parts, you add up the labor and then you price it based on that. So for me, it's a lot easier because I can actually use this system to, I guess, calculate that. But for you, you need to be careful that you don't underprice something. It's very easy to do. But for me, that's how I do it. If you're gonna be doing this regularly, it's worth the 200 bucks a month to pay for that because you also have instructions. So again, I was coming here to all data. I would type it in, da -da -da -da, and I'd pull up step-by-step -step instructions on how to do each individual job. So even someone like me that's not a master mechanic could do repairs if I knew how and knew where all the bolts were. So otherwise, we've been working on some stuff for the car flip um, website. Actually, for those of you watching on YouTube, uh, sometimes I mention our car flip, um, not course, but our group, which is a cool thing on Facebook. But I have to say, go to thecarflip.com, go to the top of the page, put in your email address, you'll get an email. That email will then have a link, click the link, then you can join the group. So what we're trying to do is to create a link that we can put into YouTube that could actually be on the screen. So when I'm talking about a video, when I mention that, something can pop up on the video like you're watching right now, and you just be able to click that, which would then take you to a website. You just click one time, which would then take you to Facebook. So that's what we're working on, trying to make that easier because that group has been really helpful for a lot of people. And I just wanna make it easier to get there. Otherwise, I think we're working on a Facebook ad. Just try to grow our Facebook page. So if you're not a, uh, well, I guess you can't be a subscriber. If you have not liked the car flip on Facebook, I think it's the car flip with Justin Carper. Check that out. All these videos go there. All the, what is it? The car flip shows go there. And then there's some live videos that we'll do there from time to time. But uh, in an, uh, I guess in an environment like that, if you had a question, you could message me or put a comment, which you can do that here too. But that's a lot of the stuff we've been working on. Otherwise, tomorrow's agenda is gonna be to get hopefully two more cars on the front line. If we can get the Explorer and the Liberty out there, that would be a huge plus. I guess you'll find out tomorrow if that actually gets accomplished or not. Um, this show we've decided we're going to do Monday through Friday. So we'll do another one tomorrow. We'll take the weekend off. We'll come back and do some more live stuff on Monday. Um, otherwise, tonight I'm going to Chick-fil-A. I was supposed to go to the gym. I might still go to the gym. We'll see. I got my gym stuff with me um, over here. So I got the basketball shoes and all ready. Um, but last minute, my wife actually gym back here. Uh, wife decided we were going to Chick-fil-A with some friends, which is cool. Big fan of Chick-fil-A. The chocolate milkshakes are amazing, but I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the gym now. But I'm supposed to be going in the morning as well. I'll play ball Wednesdays and Fridays from five to seven-ish. So I have that in the morning. So I guess if I miss, it's okay. This has nothing to do with car flipping. So if you're still watching and you're annoyed, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna do this daily thing. So we will uh, go from there. If you have any questions about anything I mentioned, or something I didn't mention that you wish I had, put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like. Um, if you dislike it, be nice, please, because I don't know what I'm doing, doing this daily live thing. Um, otherwise, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I promise a lot of our car flip shows and other videos are a lot more concise and actually having a point to them. But uh, I just want to share my day with you. Otherwise, you guys have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.